Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys another fun way to combine some traditional origami to make neat decorations for holiday season here. And uh, this is one that I really like making. It's where you take pieces of a castle and put them together to make this cool kind of like, you know, uh, plus sign or cross or however way you want to look at it. Um, and it's just sort of a fun, really sturdy origami and they make really neat uh, decorations for a Christmas tree. Um, you can uh, find a lot of different uses for them. And I, it's uh, nice because you don't need any glue. It's all just with folds. And I know there's been a few people who have taken uh, some of these kinds of pieces and connected them. And I tried, I scoured the internet. I did put this together just on my own. And then I scoured the internet to see if anyone else had ever thought of it before. So I apologize if I'm stepping on anybody's toes by sharing a design that somebody's already done. But this is just a really logical connection of the pieces for this. So I'll show you guys how to put everything together. It obviously looks really cool if you can use double-sided paper. I used some of that paper that's got a nice gold with a red. Um, creates a cool finish and it's the same on front and back so it makes it really nice if you wanted to hang it you know in a, in a window or something you can see from the back and inside the house or something like that or in a mobile. So um, I'll show you guys how to put it all together. Uh, you uh, just need four pieces of origami paper and like I said we're just making a castle You'll notice that uh, in the castle origami you do fold this last little corner up, but in this case we're not going to do that. We use it and leave it down so that we have a, a nice latching system. So I'll remind you guys how to make the castle here really quick. Um, I'm just using my paper so that I can have the outer part of everything be red, uh, green and then the inside part be yellow. So um, in this case I want to go ahead and treat that as my main color. So with that color side facing down I can go ahead and fold my paper in half diagonally both ways. What I want to do is start off with a water bomb base. So I'm going to fold my paper in half diagonally both ways. And then with that color side facing um, up, I can fold it in half both vertically and horizontally. And that should help me get the uh, base folds I need so I can collapse this down into a water bomb base. Open it up, find those diagonal creases, just pinch in the center there and let all the creases kind of go their natural way as we put a little pressure and shimmy things around until you can get a nice little triangle here. Then I'm going to take the bottom, the bottom corner and fold it up to the top. And I'm going to do that for all four sides. So I'll do the front two, flip it over, and do the same thing on the back. Then I'm going to use these little pockets that you see here, put a little pressure here, open them up, put some pressure on this edge, bringing this tip down to the bottom so that you can create a squashed out square. And if you get it nice and laid out right, you should get a nice little perfect square there. And I'll do that then again for the four total, so the other three sides as well. First two on the front, flip it over and do these guys on the back too. Then I want to take these sides and fold them back and underneath and you can try to just do that in your hands like so until it gets lined up or if you want to be a little more exact about it you could take one of these sides and fold it over and then fold back lining everything up nice here making a good crease and then putting back over. When you do this don't get too close to the center edge because you do need to have a little room to be able to roll this part over to finish it off. And I'll flip it over and do the same thing on the other side too. It's just sort of a point of preference and how comfortable you are with origami. If you're fine with just tucking it under quickly, then you could do that uh, too. Or you can do it this way to make sure everything's exact and crisp. You wind up with something like this. Now we have some more little areas that we can poof open and push down on. This time we'll be pushing down to create a little house on the sides. And you'll see we'll see some of that yellow now popping out here underneath. And I'll do this side too. And you can just use that center crease that we're putting the pressure on to line up with that edge that you see there so we can get this completed. We'll do the same thing for the back as well.
and that gives us the finished piece of the castle there. That's as far as we're going to fold. Like I said, the normal castle does have two more folds where you take this flap and fold it up on both sides. We're just going to leave it the way it is here. Now, all we, can, all we need to do here is connect these and use some of these edges uh, to help us tuck things in and com combine it all so you don't need any glue. Um, we're connecting at a 90 degree angle, so I'm just opening both of these flaps. I'm going to go keep one under, in, and under, and in on top so that you can get these kind of going on um, overlapping here. Get them to line up as close as you can. And then if you see here, we've got this nice little flap here. I want to tuck that into this side so that it's even with this edge. And so you can kind of hold on to stuff as you do this. Put a little pressure, get this to tuck underneath, and uh, get it to slide down. Put a nice little crease on it so that it tries to stay nice and snug. Um, and that just gives us a nice completed piece there then for that. And I'm just going to go around and do this for the other sides as well. And um, just a process of lining things up. Oh, excuse me. Before we do that, though, we should do the other side, too. Do the back. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Make sure you get both sides uh, so that you get both of them connected. And that way, it's really nice and secure. And we can go on to the next piece here. Um, and I just keep the same pattern of, you know, first my right and then left, right, and left. I like to just keep it the same for all of these so that they wind up looking nice when you're done. And it creates a nice balanced hold on everything when you're finished. Get this part tucked in there, flip it over, do the same thing on the back. And then I just keep doing this with the last piece too. Now on the last one, of course, we have two sides. I'm gonna first just focus on the one and then I'll get the other. We get that lined up good. And then the last one here too. Get this lined up for the last piece here. And then just connect on these last ones. And it creates a really neat, pretty kind of design. And I think it just is such a pretty pattern. And what a fun way to make for decorations on a Christmas tree. It's a great coaster. Wine glass would look so pretty on top of that. Lots of fun ways you could use it for sure. Um, and uh, just uh, not too difficult either. The castle is a great origami. And actually one of the ones we teach here in Japan to little kids in, in the beginning stages. Because the folds actually aren't that difficult. So, uh, you know, with a, a little help and guidance with people, especially on the assembly part, you can have kids help you fold the castles and then, you know, help out in putting them all together at the end too. So it's a fun project for sure. Um, um, and I'll uh, have some more fun things like this to share with you guys in the days to come. Thanks again always so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.